close your eyes and watch your breath. Each breath as it comes in, as it goes out. Try to keep your attention right here. How does the breathing feel right now? Where do you feel the breathing? Is it comfortable? Try some long breathing for a while and see if that feels good. And if long breathing feels good, keep it up. If it doesn't feel good, you can change. Try to be on top of what the body needs right now in terms of the breath. The breath gets neglected so much, and yet it's such an important part of our lives. We take it for granted. It's going to come in and go out on its own. That's true. But as it goes in goes out, if you put a lot of tension in the body, the breath doesn't get to nourish the body as much as it normally, ordinarily could. And the sense of being in the body is not comfortable, so the mind starts going out looking for things outside, trying to find its pleasure, trying to find its well-being someplace, any place but right here. And this is where, yet this is where the spot we all have to keep coming back to. How we relate to the body, how we relate to the mind in the present moment. And the breath is the main issue in the relationship between the body and the mind. When the mind gets upset or excited, the breath is going to change. And as the breath changes, it changes the body. So if you can counteract that by smoothing the breath out, you find that the body becomes a much more pleasant place to be. Your mind begins to calm down. And that way you get some control over this. This element that's right here, it's very close and it's free. You, don't, you still haven't figured out a way to privatize your breath yet. So it's still yours to breathe in, breathe out as you like. So take advantage of that. This is a sign of wisdom, taking advantage of the little things you have right around you. But my teacher, John Fuang, used to call the, the grass at the, the cattle gate. In other words, the cattle go running out of the pen as soon as the gate is open. They're looking for grass someplace else, and yet there's grass right there next to the gate, but they don't want to go there. As a result, they have to go foraging far and wide. Yet there's still some good grass right there. So instead of having to look for well-being outside, having to pay somebody else for it, or having to depend on somebody else for your well-being, you can learn how to depend for your well on your own well-being on your, on your own, simply by noticing how you breathe and how that has a good effect on the body, how it has a good effect on the mind. It's a kind of happiness that harms nobody. In Buddhism, when they talk about merit, this is what they're talking about, a happiness that's harmless. Generosity is harmless. Virtue, when you abstain from killing and stealing, lying, illicit sex, intoxicants, that's a harmless pleasure too, a harmless happiness. And the meditation, when you learn how to be with the breath and a sense of good, goodwill for yourself, goodwill for others, a sense of well-being inside like this, this too is another kind of harmless happiness. That kind of happiness is hard to find in the world, and yet another, in some ways it's not hard at all. This opportunity is right here, being generous being virtuous, learning how to get some control of your mind through de developing good qualities inside. This kind of happiness is lasting. It's good for you, it's good for the people around you. When your mind gets more into control, when you have more control over your moods in this way, other people are less the victim of your moods. So focus on the kind of happiness that's free, that's harmless, and that spreads the goodwill and spreads your happiness around. It's a skill that's really worth developing, it's something you can do every day. You can't come to the monastery every day, but you can do this skill every day. And that's what you should take home with you, the skills and how to be happy.